Hi everyone. Let's talk about Tableau Embedded Analytics in Salesforce Experience Cloud. So today we're going to be talking about how the experience for an end user looks like when Tableau is embedded in a Salesforce community, as well as the experience of a developer of the portal, right? How easy it is for them to actually get some Tableau content embedded in the community. But before we start, I want to show you some examples of Salesforce Experience Cloud, the community cloud. So it could be it's basically a very easy, low entry barrier, let's say a no code experience to build websites, portals, community pages, partner portals, and things like that. So this is an example here of the RBO partner community where they have the conversations going there, several topics, and people can please basically just start interacting with each other, start asking questions. Uh, let's see, hotels, and you get a bunch of answers if there's something. There we go. And so this is a way for people to log in and answer and help each other. But there are, all, there are always ways of, you know, providing a, pro, uh, a protected page. Let's see another example here. This is from Denmark, a beautiful zoo with uh, this nice page. So you can see it looks like any modern website you would expect with a static page here in the front, uh, some other content on another page, and some lovely meerkats that everybody loves. So I was saying we could use an experience cloud to build a dynamic portal, right? This is more like a bank, a business application here where customers have to sign in to be able to see their data, look at trans transactions and bank accounts and statements and things like that. Or it could be like a public sector website where we have, uh, for instance, uh, like a collaborative research here. And we, we have a page here where we have uh, some more statistics and some more analytical content, which is the topic of this session, right? Well, so here we have an example of some content that talks about patient lives and uh, you know the kind of diagnosis they are taking and related to COVID. And this is a very rich piece of content which comes directly from the Tableau environment as you can see here. So uh, yeah, all this information is uh, brought to, to us from an embedded dashboard which are fully interactive here. All right, so back to the topic of the session. So let's take now the role of, you know, uh, the company now, uh, we have Cirrus company providing content, uh, providing an, a website for their customers to access, and it's an energy company. And one of their customers is Andrea. Andrea is a portfolio analyst, and she cares about, you know, the key statistics of energy production in the U.S. She's based there, and she cares about her key KPIs. It should be a one-stop shop, one place for her to not only understand the data about that she cares about the energy production, but also to take actions from there. So let's jump to this community that Andrea accesses. And this is the Cirrus community, as I was saying. And I, like I said, it's pretty interactive. And, and there, this is the public page of the community, right? This is public content, everybody can access. But the protected content where uh, Andrea is responsible for and where she can see her statistics and, and it's completely protected because there's confidential data uh, is accessible through a login. And you notice here on the top, there's no analytical content yet. You see three buttons here. As soon as I sign in, let's have a look what happens here when I sign in with Andrea. Then we get presented back to the community page and now we see two new pieces of content here. And this is the one she cares about today. She wants to do some analysis of the natural gas production of energy across the US. So her dashboard here provides a quick, nice and very artistic overview uh, and yet very useful overview of the energy production by state. And she could browse perhaps the renewable production. And as you can see, everybody updates really quickly and fast. This is content brought to us, to her, directly from Tableau, embedded in this experience. We can hardly tell, right? Because it's so nicely uh, white labeled here. I, I guess there's a lot of data about petroleum, so let's leave it to calculate, and there we go. But she cares about natural gas today. She wants to understand what is the state producing the most amount of natural gas and from visual cues, she knows, notices that Rhode Island is the one. And when she clicks on that, the system presents her with an option to uh, actually drill down and understand what's happening in Rhode Island. So you notice I clicked first in natural gas down at the bottom and then in Rhode Island. So now she's going to take an action based on this context, those selections. And off we go. Now we have a search engine for natural gas in Rhode Island. And she sees that there's a path to renewable. Natural gas is going away, oil is going away, gas is going away. That's good news for her. So this is just an example of things that she wants to do, right? A one-stop shot, but she can take action. This action starts in a dashboard and ends in another page on the same system or a different, different system, like in this case. But 
it doesn't end there. So what happens is that uh, Andrea also gets requests from her customers and her customers are asking questions all the time and one dashboard is not gonna be able to answer all her questions. So she comes back to her colleague, uh, the, the supplier, right? The, the, the company that she buys a service for, from, which is Cirrus, right? And Cirrus is the one who owns this content. And we have then the developers at Cirrus who are able to pick requests. And Andrea goes and requests and she says, I want, I want one specific type of analysis here that someone is asking me. I want to see not only that tr uh, trend of energy production uh, in a map, but I also want the cumulative numbers, right? I want to see over time how much production, not only the pointing time uh, values, right? But also the total numbers over time. And that's nice and done. So here's where we have our second persona in the picture. So now let's take the role of a person who sits in, uh, on, on the, the company that provides the service. That's Cirrus, right? And Yan is a VI and portal developer. He happens to take two roles of the analyst and the, the developer. I mean, he can be the web developer in this case because that is the whole point of Salesforce uh, Experience Cloud, right? Anyone with some slightly more technical skills can actually, without code, build those kind of pages. And if they want to customize, by the way, with some, some code, it's possible as well. But then Yan needs to go and build that dashboard that Andrea really uh, asked for. And what he cares is really to do that, to be able to churn around reports on a quick time to market, very quickly produce something and return to the customers. And that's something that Tableau allows them to do, to be very agile and respond to analytical queries from their customers right, to deliver new content. And then everything that he builds needs to have security and governance. Data security is key, right? Because he, he intends to actually share this content with multiple people, not only Andrea, but uh, if he's building once, maybe deploy on every side so every customer can benefit from that, not only Andrea. So it has to show only the right data to the right people. So, and this all needs to be an agile setup. He needs to be able to embed this new piece of content back in Salesforce. So let's see how this experience for Ian looks like. So I'm gonna jump here to another tab and I will uh, first go to the Tableau environment as Ian. And now Ian needs to connect to the data and create a new piece of analysis, right? She needs to answer the question on uh, the distribution of energy to cumulative distribution, as well as the map and the trends. So he goes there and he start, needs to connect to data as a starting point, the energy data source. And here he has the production in megawatt hours. There we go, over time. And perhaps he wants to add the energy sources as well. There we go, he has, uh, maybe there's a more aggregated one. Let's have a look at this one. Yeah, this is a more highly aggregated. So this is the first piece of content he wants to embed. I'm gonna rename as energy source. By energy distribution by source, a type of energy, right? Well, the other thing he wants to put in a dashboard is the cumulative curve. So actually, instead of creating a new tab, I'm just gonna go and duplicate this content. And it couldn't be easier, right, for Jan. He can just simply click a button here, which is out of the box, running total. And now he has the answer to, uh, for her, right? So now he has the energy distribution, Cumulative by source. So let's put cumulative and that's how we spell by source. Great. And perhaps he wants to also allow her to uh, look at the, the states again and that generation of energy by state because maybe she might want to drill down and filter, right? So let's put some labels as well to make it look nice. The state names and the production here. And that's the production map, the energy production map. So now we're now having these three pieces of content. It's a piece of cake for him. Just gonna make an automatic size dashboard and I need to bring the production, that uh, time series here, and that other one, the cumulative one, which is what she wanted. And then to allow for interactivity, uh, perhaps we're gonna zoom in here and uh, forget Alaska for now, because she ha he happens to know her customers are not in Alaska. And yeah, and then we're gonna click this magic button here that allows him to start filtering the other sheets by the selections on the screen. So that creates a very rich user experience. So now if she wants to look again at uh, this region here, New Jersey, uh, and it, it, it filters down as they click. I could also uh, maybe enable here some animations as they click, and that's it. So now 
it should have some beautiful transitions yes it does great great that's beautiful so now what he needs to do is to save this piece of content and i'm gonna do uh, something like here embed community right so this is exactly what i need and this is what we want to now quickly go and embed back in the portal so let's see that new piece of content create uh, that we just created i'm going to sort by the time and this is the embed community and this is the specific dashboard we want to embed okay so how do we do that embed now back in the community it's super easy we go to the share button and we copy this link so now that we have copied the link we are going to navigate to the community page and we will log in with the account from Jan because he's an admin and he wants to add this new dashboard to the community. Let's see how we do that. So he has the option to go to the builder experience, right? So I'm going to go to the page where we want to embed and it's here. This is where we have the energy dashboard and we would like to add the other dashboard here as well. So I'll go to the builder page. Once I'm in the builder, it's giving me a wizard and so on. I don't want to say the wizard. Right, so let's see how easy it is to embed a new component. So, and that's how it is. We have a menu on the left. Here is how we can actually add new capabilities to our website, our portal. And one of the things that we can do, we can search here, there's a Tableau component. Where is that? I think it's still rendering. Let's give it some time. But there we have Tableau visualization. So what I can do here, I can simply go and put one new piece of content here and it opens, opens up a wizard. For me, it's already filling up with a visualization from Tableau Public. The one I want is the one I copied from here. I can just go here and paste and I can set the size I want. Perhaps, uh, yeah, that's a good enough size for me, maybe a little bit bigger, 600 pixels. And it's making, yeah, nice. But then Jan is already anticipating the next question from Andrea, right? So it's always the case. You ask for something and ask for something. So Jan realizes, why don't we provide her a better, uh, I wouldn't say better, a different self-service experience. So he's going to embed a natural language generation option here so that she can also ask, ask questions on the data herself. So the way he does that, he's going to go to the data source behind this dashboard. And just by clicking there, he stay take it to this view that provides him the experience. So for example, Andrea could ask, uh, what are the uh, energy production? Something like this. My energy source, and then this one. Oh, something bad with my, my mouse. Yep, now I clicked. And then what he needs to do is to go to this uh, little embed link here, click. He needs to copy this URL here up until the embed equals yes. That's all he needs, copy. So then he goes to the experience builder. He's gonna add a new Tableau visualization component, maybe under this one. And now this is going to take the form of an ask data experience. And he's going to use 600 pixels as well. And there we go. Now we have an ask data experience. I think it's refreshing the size. Yeah, 600. Maybe I'll put 550. It's loading the background, but that's okay. We can just say, you know, let's preview the final result. And we can go and we can go back to the builder and publish. And if all is working okay, every new user will be able to see those changes here. So let's give it a second to publish. Great, and it's ready. And now we have uh, the new dashboard for Andrea, the way she asked. And we have the Ask Data Experience coming up as well here. And what we can do is go back to Andrea's experience. So this is the session on the other browser for Andrea, and I'm just gonna refresh the page. And hopefully she's also able to see the new pieces of content and that, that's how the new version is shipped to production. Very quickly, very easily, 
oh, there's some problem here, I guess, because, yeah, that's something we need to take into consideration. But it's a good thing is that Andrea doesn't have the right to do this. She's not the user with privileges to do self-service. So what she needs is to pay a, a higher, higher license, a higher price license. And that's one of the ways that uh, Jan and the team at Cirrus can start monetizing, right? So they would actually build this in a slightly different way to be able to check first if she has the rights to do so and then embed this capability only for the users who should be able to, to see that, who have rights to do that. But that's how easy uh, the experience was for him to go to market and deliver new content. So what have we just saw? seen? We just saw uh, the quick experience to create dashboards on the Tableau side and be able to publish this in the Salesforce experience. We saw Andrea analyzing data as a new user. She sees her uh, questions answered very quickly. She's able to very quickly respond to requests from customers by you know, taking actions right there in the system where she is. She realizes there's a, a need for always more questions being answered. So one single tablet dashboard won't cut. She needs to be able to make requests and get responses quickly from the service provider, in this case, Ceros, and also ask her own questions. So uh, Jan is the key guy here who doesn't have to do much, but actually very easily provides a very rich experience back to her, embedding this kind of chatbot-like interface as well as dashboards, which follows the governance and security. So she, having a, if she had access, of course, she would be able to now ask questions on the chatbot and just work. And that's how it is. I work. I hope this was useful for you and looking forward to discuss the next steps.